previously on the Great Ace Attorney 2 Resolve. Oh, no, actually, this is my autobiography. <laughs> this is my <laughs> ticket out of here. And he hits the button and the wall explodes. Just leaps out of there. This is for my prison escape. Bye, boo. And now back to leg Giga people. Sneak a B. Back with some more. The Great Ace Attorney 2 Resolve. When we last left off, we returned to our investigation with actually now actually being allowed to freaking investigate shit. Though I will say that overall, we didn't really like, I feel like glean a ton of information when we actually went up there. Like we got the the cage thing, which actually I, I realized I didn't actually examine it last episode. I guess Naruto is literally carrying this in his pocket right now. And we talked with Van Ziggs that was up there, but otherwise we didn't really like, <laughs> like now that this restriction was dropped, I was kind of expecting us to really go deep. But it's like, I was like, well, there's the cage that that wasn't there before. All right, see ya, <laughs> but it's fine. We're still talking to everybody and learn some other new things. We saw a uh, strong heart talking with the coroner who I think we're actually about to go see here. Uh, in this episode. And, oh, most importantly, oh my God, fucking, I love it so much. <laughs> Freaking the characters figured it out. They said it, they're like, that's fucking Cosmo. <laughs> Cosmo Sama, you motherfucker. And I just couldn't be happier. You know what? I think someone who really put it well was Can Can, who last episode said, uh, Phoenix, I wonder who this mass prosecutor is. Guess I'll just have to wait for the last case to find out. Susan Toe, Cosmo, get your ass over here. I'm not dealing with this mysterious identity thing for the entire game. I think we know who is the more proactive person in the Ace Attorney series when it comes to the mysterious men in masks. Oh my God. You have no idea how thrilled I was, honestly, to have that happen. Just, and I think even after the episode ended, I was just like, it sort of sad me. I was like, oh, thank God. <laughs> thank God. Yes. Yes. They put in obvious, like they made it relatively obvious. They had the characters figure it out for themselves really early on, all right? We're in case fucking three, okay? They didn't put it off to case four or the fucking final case. No, they're like, no, bitch, you get like two seconds to think about this and now we're figuring it out, all right? And that's perfect because I swear to you, all right? I swear to you, every other game in the Ace Attorney series that isn't part of the great Ace Attorney series would not have done that. They would have absolutely waited till the last fucking second and then been like, oh God, who? It turned out it was Cosmo all along, you know? So I'm fucking thrilled. I, I really am so glad that they just, they didn't dwell on it and that the characters themselves figure it out. And it makes sense that they would know that that was uh, a Sogi, right? Because he was like their best friend. So of course they would like recognize him a bit, especially because that mask is only really covering the upper part of his face. All right, he's still got that jawline, man. I will say it is kind of odd that the first thing <laughs> that they decide to do when they figure out this, this man has amnesia, better make him assistant prosecutor. The hell is strong heart up to? Uh, anyway, Cat Cat, thank you so much for hitting the nail on the head with your comment. And it's for that reason you are comment of the day. By the way, you guys did also inform me of a few other things. First off, the uh the name Asian, that is apparently the real name for Giselle Brett, is actually a name that was brought up in the previous game, though it was under a different uh pseudonym to what we got in this game. In the Scarlet Study version of the game, the name was Ah Sashin or Sashin, yeah, Ah Sashin. And what that name was from, it, that was from the the Morse code translated uh message they got from the music box that had four names listed in there which included Asogi, uh to tobias gregson john watson and asa shin or asian in this clip in this game interesting mm. so we now know who everybody on that list was right and the thing is everybody has seemingly had uh either been killed or had an attempt made on their life except for gregson right seemingly unless something's happened off screen that we didn't know about but like watson's dead giselle brett is dead ahsoki was seemingly dead but now has come back from the dead which i am wondering is that the great departed soul in this game or is that actually going to refer to somebody else in this case i i actually will be kind of curious about that but gregson seems fine and that's interesting like so is it a hit list like what is it supposed to represent are they are they privy to information i don't know still got a lot of questions in that regard but hey at least i have an excuse for not remembering the name right it wasn't exactly the same as it was in the previous game granted i might still not have recognized it but that's beside the fucking point okay it was mentioned for all of like two seconds at the end of the last game cut me some slack damn it oh by the way you guys also clarify that 
potentially what could have happened with the whole postcard thing with Suzuto and why Iris like, wait, did you not understand like what happened to her father and everything? It's possible that she could have written the, the postcard in Japanese because it was intended for Naruhoto. So maybe she could have gleaned maybe enough to understand, oh, hey, she's coming back, but she couldn't figure out the stuff about her father. So, OK, well, that's, that's possible, I suppose. It doesn't really matter that much, honestly, but a lot of times I think things are just done in in the game and story. Sometimes just to just to be like, hey, here's a reminder or something for you, you the player, right? Just like why, like why is Naruto bringing up like, man, I can't believe it's been this long since I had lost being a prosecutor and blah 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 blah. Why am I bring up these characters? It's it's just to fucking remind us, all right? Don't take it too seriously. It's not that big a deal. I would definitely not call that shit that immersion breaking. And I think that's a decent a decent enough explanation as to why that could have been the case. But okay, so now Susito has figured out that that is fucking Cosma. That is absolutely 100 billion percent Cosma. That means Holmes lied to us. Why did he do that? Well, we got to fucking find out. But before we do that, uh, Gina, did I present this to you? I think I did in one of the previous ones, but uh, that defense lawyer. Oh, yeah, yeah that's right. She's like, check out my badge. I'm not sure if there's anything new that might happen because Susito is with me now. Uh, all right, this. I did not look at this. Uh, ooh, hey, there's a big old boo boo there. Ah, uh, look here, Mrs. Susito. Oh, yes. The wood's cracked and broken a little bit. I suppose because it fell from such a height? Yes, from the height at which the bloom was flying down to the crystal tower below. A fall of about 30 feet, or 9 meters. Leaving the man inside tragically dead. Dead. Uh, okay. I mean, that... Interesting. Causing damage to its base. That seemingly lines up with what we already knew, so... Which must mean that we're going to glean something that would like, oh, well, then it didn't fall. So where did that damage come from? Mayhaps. I guess that's it. We didn't touch it. I just floated it in front of me <laughs> and rotated it with my mind to look at it. Don't get mad at me, Inspector Gregson. Okay, I think we're all done with you. Uh, okay, bye, Gina. Bye, doggy. Uh, all right, so we have two places to go to. Madame Two Spells and Forensic Laboratory. I wonder if the exclamation point is like, is that supposed to indicate like, that's where I should absolutely go next or does it not matter? Uh, let's go to the Forensic Laboratory first. It does seem like there are some instances though where like, you could potentially go someplace first, right? Because sometimes we get information from one place and then you got to bring it into the uh, to another place and like bring it up to somebody, right? I haven't really had that happen yet, but I feel like I've sort of been going in just the right order just to make sure that like, I don't have to make repeat trips to other pl places. Also, holy shit, like all this dank dark stuff. Is that blood? Real blood? People bleed when they die. October 23rd, Forensics Laboratory. I believe this is it. Dr. Sai's laboratory. The chemical smell really assaults the nose. There's plenty to assault the eyes in here too. There's a holy boatload of shit in here. Damn. It looks as though the doctor isn't here. But we're here now, so we may as well do some sightseeing, don't you think? What a seasoned tourist you become, Miss Suzuto. We could just have a little look around, being careful not to upset any restless souls. I'm gonna dance with that skeleton over there. Nee, 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 nee. Look at all this. Look at all this stuff in here. Look at this owl. Looks like an owl and a crow up there. Ka ka! Woohoo! Quoth the raven, eat my shore, Suzuto. Suzuto's like, what'd you say to me? I'm sorry, I didn't mean ah! <laughs> Chucks his ass to the ground. Say it again, you you. Say it again! I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I just, I'm just quoting a I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I know, and they haven't even twisted as we came in here. Well, no, they wouldn't have. They're taxidermy mounts, Mr. Naruto. Ugh, I was afraid you were gonna say that. Oh, no. The poor, dead, lifeless look in his eyes tells it all. I've been trying very hard to tell myself they're just sleeping with their eyes open. <laughs> oh, oh, Naruto, you poor sweet summer child. Yes, I think perhaps you were wise to put something like your Daruma doll on display in the office instead. <laughs> yeah, oh God. And not what an owl with one eye closed. When I become a true lawyer, I'll be able to pry his dead lifeless eye open. Well, hey, Mr. Skeleton, how you doing? Oh, I feel so great. I feel a little tickle in my funny bone, if you know what I mean. Waka waka. Well, look at this. What a magnificent display case. The cherry wood has been polished to a high sheen and the intricate carving is a joy to behold. <laughs> What's their cabinet makers really are very skilled, aren't they? Do you have nothing to say about the skeleton inside Mr. Naruto? <laughs> Mrs. Susito, can't you tell that I'm trying very hard to avoid talking about the terrifying contents of the case? It's how I cope. <laughs> I'll be sure to remember that from now on. 
<laughs> the flip dollar in this game is so good. It's so top notch. Naruhoto's inner musings, they definitely are very kind of Apollo-esque, right? It's part of what I loved about Apollo too, where he's so he can be so like kind of morbid at times. Just, I've lost my will to live. It's like Jesus Christ, man. He's just such a little cinnamon bun. Look at all these. I can't look at the bloody table. Really? Really? Nothing particular of note here. Nothing but stains of someone's giblets but this skull head looks cool look at all those bottles and shells in those cabinets one assortment of chemicals these ones here are labeled highly toxic don't drink it mr ohoto uh, that's worrying because they look delicious <laughs> no, mr. Ohoto! this again is happening within her imagination miss susto please stop daydreaming about me murdering myself i can't help it all right you must be protected. This world is a cruel mistress, Mr. Narahoto. Because there are also things that look like salt and pepper shakers in there. Oh, yes. They actually say salt and pepper on them. What? The doctor probably spends a lot of time in, in this room, I suppose. Perhaps she has meals here sometimes. Life goes on. Even when you're surrounded by death. <laughs> surrounded, by, surrounded by the sweet embrace of death. Damn. These implements. A table and a set of sharp tools. We consider each in isolation, uh, isolation, it all looks quite innocent. And why is it that when you put them side by side, they seem so horribly disturbing? It might be best not to ponder it too deeply. Seeing the large tome that's open on the desk does make me wonder, though. How can anybody concentrate on bookwork when this acrid odor of chemicals in the air? You either have to have a cast iron constitution or a really terrible sense of smell. I'll be wearing a fucking mask all the time. Those large jars seem to have pale things floating around inside them. I suppose they're fruit liqueurs or something. Or like the pickled umeboshi plums we make back home. Ah, father had jars like that in his laboratory as well. I expect they're human organs in a preserving solution. Probably as examples of some rare medical condition. Or getting pickled to be eaten later. Mr. Arhono! I'm sorry, I'm just... This is how I cope. I cope with humor! Incredibly morbid, dark, disgusting humor! <laughs> Mrs. So there are some things in the world that it's perfectly fine never to know about. Ever. Oh. So as I said, I'm sure they're fruit liqueurs or umeboshi, aren't they? Of, of course. <laughs> Damn. Naruhoto with the with the snarky the snarky quotes this episode. I like it. I am shocked I am not looking at this shit. I feel like this maybe is like my wait until like she comes in here before I can examine this shit. Alright, let's go ahead and look at I guess her tome. Her big book of shit. Look at this big, thick-ass book here. Damn, boy. Damn. Uh, it appears to be an accounting, le accounting ledger. It's a record of the forensic investigation team spending, I think. Oh? What is it? It's clear the team purchases various equipment and supplies on a monthly basis, but... Well, one entry seems rather strange. Really? In what way? They're buying 500 scalpels every month. 500? 500 of them? They must be working really hard in dissecting corpses. Damn. Are they cutting them in? How tiny of little pieces are they cutting them into? I don't know. Judicial autopsies are only carried out in certain special circumstances. And scalpel blades can be sharpened, too. It, it does seem a bit strange. You're right. 500 scalpels a month? What could they possibly be using all of them for? That is kind of weird. Uh. What are you doing? Ah! Damn. Wow, you are so cool looking. <laughs> Holy shit, man. Damn. That is a badass fucking design. She's got little snakes or something on her fucking wrists. And I think they had like two snakes around her. It looks like a pin on her tie. Damn, you're so cool. <laughs> Why are you so cool? Sorry, we um, had something we wanted to ask you, but you weren't here, so. So you thought you'd snoop around. That's acceptable to you people from the East, is it? Well, what do you want? Uh, no, Lord Strongheart told us, you see, that it was you who examined the victim's body. Uh, Mr. Asman's body, I mean. So we came to ask you about your findings. On Lord Strongheart's advice. Very well. If the Lord Chief Justice has given his consent, I'll tell you what our investigation revealed. 
But when we're done, you must leave immediately. Charming. Hey, first off, check this out. Dr. Scythe, ah, oh, dang it, you don't give me a response to it. Oh, you think I'm good enough, do you? Uh, no, no, I didn't mean... So I'm not, I'm not good enough. In that case, why would you show me anything? Uh, clearly you're not good for me to show you anything ever, ever. Oh, uh, what did I say? Yes, yeah, so the doctor says, would you be good enough to take a look at this? Fine, be that way. Uh, can I examine this shit yet? Nope. Uh, let's look at this real quick, just because that was the one thing I didn't look at. So this is Dr. Sai's desk. Ugh, I would not like to work in a place like this. It's very tidy though, isn't it, Mr. Naruhoto? Imagine how efficiently she must work. The lighting is poor, which is bad for the eyes, and the chemical smell can't be good for you. Not to mention the skeleton watching over you as you work, which is definitely bad for the nerves. Well, yes, those are valid concerns, I suppose. I could just about cope with a one-eyed Daruma doll watching over me, but that's all. <laughs> Pirate Daruma doll, Arr, keep at it. Naruto, you'll be a lawyer one day, Arr, I'm already a lawyer, you asshole, fuck you. All right. <laughs> Your findings, tell me. So, you want to know what the forensic investigation team determined from its examination of this scene? The victim, Mr. Odi Asman, who disappeared from the experimentation stage and made an explosion. And the Mr. Asman, who appeared moments later part way up the Crystal Tower. But without question, one and the same person. That is the team's conclusion. But, but that can't be right. If it was an elaborate trick, we could only speculate about how it was carried out. Let's see. If two people who looked very similar to each other were involved, they could have made it appear as if one single person had switched places, couldn't they? Very true. But sadly, in this instance, that was not the case. The man who disappeared and the man who subsequently reappeared was the same person. The fingerprints of the scene make that quite evident. Ah, fingerprints. They're not yet officially recognized as forensic ev evidence in the British justice system. But one day, they'll be used as an investigative aid as a matter of course. Oh, my, but that would mean that the instantaneous kinesis actually took place. So, where does that leave us? My team was tasked with investigating, not drawing conclusions. Instantaneous kinesis is impossible, and yet the body did move from one place to the other. This hasn't cleared anything up at all. It's made the whole thing even more of a mystery. Hmm, unless he's lying to us, potentially. What in the fuck is that? Bird! What it? what? Mama? Mama! Mama! Feed me, Mama! I'm a bird! <laughs> uh... An, oh my god, another new character? Okay. Not to mention, is this seemingly another masked assistant? Mama, what is this? Ah! Where did she spring from? And did she just call the doctor Mama? This is a lawyer, dear. Oh. Um, hello. T to meet you. P -p Please, to meet you. Yes, I'm a defense lawyer. Rena's cannot. Mama? Yes. Can I cut this one up? Oh my god, you're a fucking demon lord. What? Ah! I've never seen an eastern person in before. I want to know what it looks like. Of course you can't. It's a live specimen, as you can very well see. Ah! Are all the scalpels for her to play with or some shit? Hmm. Boring. Die. I think I gotta go. <laughs> I just had a near-death experience. Waka waka. Oh dear, Mr. Arahoto, you're as pale as a corpse. Oh no. And then let's leave here before I'm mistaken for one. Don't say that, Miss Susano. Oh, I can't. What? I can't. I can't converse anymore? How about I look at you? So, what are you doing at the moment, Doctor? Keeping a close eye on things so no impertinent Easterners think they can look around my office. Are there such impertinent Easterners around? How terrible. Yes, you. <laughs> really, you're making to make me say it. She doesn't miss her words, Miss Suzuto. <laughs> I felt like 
looks that's kind of funny i thought it was an hour hoping a little bit of smart ass <laughs> really are they around here where could they be i think it's perhaps time we left wow okay we did not stick around here much very long at all did we bummer i can't even present my badge again to you where'd your daughter go all right well i guess we're done bye Nah, we don't see an exclamation point again here so it must be the case that the uh uh the exclamation point just shows up for brand new places that you've literally never been to before so uh, october 23rd madam two spells i swear to god if this fucking uh, investigation ends in like the next 10 minutes i'm gonna be super pissed oh my no wonder it's called the house of horrors i'd like to turn on my heels and go straight home via the confectionery being scared makes you crave sweets i can understand that <laughs> That is perfectly reasonable. I was looking forward to a reunion after six months away, but there's no sign of Mr. Holmes anywhere. Oh, I'm sure he's close at hand, trust me. That's strange. He should be here investigating the abduction of the waxwork. Oh, well, so we'll just have to come back again later. What? No, come on, he's here. No, look to your right, he... oh. What? No, come on, he's here. He's, he's. Really? He's not here? Well, I guess I might as well look at all this shit while I'm with Susto. This one's posture reveals his weakness. Sorry? The killer's stance leaves him wide open to attack. I'm quite sure I could see him off. Oh my god! With a Susto takedown, then a Susto squash, and finally, a Susto smash! Oh my god! I love Susan Doe so fucking much, dude. She's the best. She's the best assistant ever. Fuck you, my. <laughs> Fuck you, Trucy. You guys are shit now. Sorry, Susan Doe is queen. Right. I'm just kidding. I still, I still love them, too. I just... Susan Doe, I, I, I do like Susan Doe, I think, probably the most. If that doesn't render the culprit unconscious, the Susan Doe Slam should finish him. Susan Doe Slam? Oh, I'm sorry. It's rather hard to explain. Oh, no. Leave yourself open slightly and I'll demonstrate. Absolutely not. No, uh, I'm all guard now. I'm all alert. No, don't you touch me, sis. No. Ah, there's a step ladder there. Look. Oh, yes. Uh, I thought I was looking at the shoe there. A step ladder. Uh-oh. I think perhaps we should let the proprietors know that someone's left it out. The step ladder, I mean. Oh, no. Norodo. Ha! Huh? What was that? This is your successor, this is Phoenix, Phoenix Wright. Wright. What? Who the hell is that? Shut up, there's no time for that, all right? I know you're thinking, but what you're about to start here is going to continue for eons, generations of fucking ace attorneys. You just need to let it go. Let it go, Narahodo. I, I don't think I can't. You have the shovel and the spade thing already, all right? You're getting greedy. Let it go, Narahodo. I, 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 Mr. Narahodo, what's wrong? You're sweating. I just, I, um, uh, it's, uh, what, 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 what'd you call it again? Call what? The thing there. You mean the bag? No, no, the other thing. The shoot. No, the, the thing that was, the, oh, oh, the step ladder. Yeah, yeah, about that. Is something wrong? Why do I feel as though I just managed to sidestep an argument? <laughs> I got an achievement. The top rug. Oh my God. He did it. He actually did it. Yes, good. You have saved us many, many a heartache, Naruto-san. Now I shall return to being your great-great-great-grandson. And being the best lawyer that ever was. And then being a hobo, but then being a lawyer again. Bye! I don't know what was in Iris's tea today, but I think I really gotta lay off the stuff now. <laughs> That's amazing. I love it. I actually love it. They didn't do it. They didn't do it. They already have the shovel and the spade thing, right? There was no need. But goddamn doodly. So I'm actually really not supposed to be here now, huh? Am I going to talk to Strongheart again? Be like, hey, she didn't cooperate a lot with me. <laughs> I mean, I guess she gave me what I asked for anyway, but she didn't give me any more fluff dialogue. That makes me sad. That old policeman isn't here now, obviously. Still can't believe he just happened to be on the jury, though. What are the odds? I understood that London has a population of 6 million people, and yet... You do seem to run in the same people disproportionately often, don't you? So they, at least they're like willing to make fun of it, right? Like I, I, I saw some people who were like, like some of the comments were like, all us players are complaining about like the the odds of them showing up there. I don't think it's really that big of a deal. I really don't. I think it's funny. All right, I think it's funny. I get it. Okay, I absolutely get it. It's a, these, these character models that are literally have a billion different animations, and they're gonna use them for what one time. 
for one trial and one moment, I get having to reuse them again. At least they're willing to make fun of it. You know, that they're actually willing to make a joke about it because that shows that they're aware of it and they're just trying to poke fun at it. Is it ridiculous? Yes, you have, but you have to suspend your disbelief for some of that, right? And just like the thing with Iris asking about the postcard, is it really that big of a deal? Not really. It's not, that's not the stuff that, sh that needs to be insanely realistic and consistent, right? Now the cases themselves and like the reasoning behind all that and character motivations and things, that's the stuff that's the most important in, in a story a story like this, especially for consistency. Things like this are thrown in there just to show that, hey, just so you know, we we know about it and we're gonna make a joke about it. Poking fun at themselves. Ah, yes, the heavy curtains in the middle of the house of horrors. Whatever's on the other side of them, you just know it's gonna be terrifying, don't you? The sign says it's the Madame Tuspel special exhibit. It seems you have to pay extra to go inside. I know, can you believe that? Pay more money as if we haven't been scared enough already. It's not my doing, Mr. Arahoto. <laughs> no, it is your doing. You did this. Uh. Okay, I think we're good on this side. All right, let's look at this shit. Oh, what a horrifying scene. A murderer caught in a grisly act. I know. And in case you were wondering, it's the one with the big knife that's supposed to be the killer. <laughs> I don't think anybody would be in any doubt about that, surely? Do you know that according to the description, the bathtub at the back has no particular significance. What? Really? I would have thought it was meant to show that the killer also worked in a bathhouse peddling criminal wares. Aha! We have a new theory. <laughs> wow, the fluff dialogue is on point today. What the fuck? Damn. The fluff dialogue is great this episode. Jesus. I mean, it's already been pretty damn good, but this was like... I mean, I've got a big laughs out of a lot of these already. Oh, okay, I guess we're not supposed to be here yet? Uh... Wait, oh, let's see. Uh, are you sure we've asked everything we need to, Mr. Arahoto? We don't have any business here at the prosecutor's office. Okay, no, he doesn't want me there. I wonder if the evidence we, given, we were given by Professor Herbrand will come in useful somehow. No, it's not, she's not saying anything about like, I don't think we've been in there quite, been here in quite some time. Um, is there something here that I missed? Talk to her about something? I can't actually move up there. Unless I gotta like look back here for some shit. Oh, I guess maybe I need to. Maybe, maybe I do. What a shame that the symbolic landmark of the Great Exhibition has been damaged like that. Yes, unfortunately. Birdcage crashed in the most prominent position possible. So the gods gave us a warning if you ask me. Man must not travel under his own steam and not cut corners with the instantaneous kinesis. But imagine what might have happened if the birdcage had landed in a slightly different location. The death toll could have been far worse. So I think perhaps it was a blessing in disguise. Well... Guys are benevolent, obviously. And I guess the guy was kind of a dipshit, too. So fuck him, right? Yeah, fuck him. He deserves to burn in hell. I did say it was just a warning. Man must travel under his own steam or next time birch cages will rain down on all of you. All of you. That sounds like something I would say. Your faith is much stronger than I realized. Well, how do you think I passed the entrance exam for Yuma University? It wasn't my study alone. <laughs> it was up every night praying to the one guy that would fucking listen to me. Uh, the Crystal Tower. I can't believe I'm seeing it in such close proximity with my own eyes. You've really been looking forward to the Great Exhibition, haven't you, Mrs. Sisato? Oh, yes. When I found out that I had to return to Japan, I'm afraid I cursed my luck. But here you are, back in London, gazing up at the magnificent tower. I know. Perhaps I was wrong to curse my luck so harshly. Oh, Do I need to, like, show something to... to her, maybe? Maybe show this to her? Uh... Nope, she's just gonna steal something from me. Sisato, what do I do? Do you know? I also thought I never, I would not, I'd never have the opportunity to return to Great Britain. And certainly, not so soon. It's funny, for the past six months, I haven't been able to work in court. Meanwhile, you've been raising a storm in the Supreme Court of Judicature back in Japan. Please, Star Hodo. I may have been dressed as a man, but it was a very reserved performance. So what your father said in his letter about a Rio Taro takedown is reserved. <laughs> well, anyway, I'm back here in this great capital now. I'm ready to assist you again, in any way I can. Thank you, Miss Susto. It's my pleasure, Mr. Arahoto. Oh, that was adorable. It doesn't tell me what I need to do, though. What am I missing here? It has to be here at the experimentation stage. I must be... I must have to present something to Gina. Oh, uh, Enoch Drover's, uh, card? Yeah, here we go. About this, Gina. Yeah, I'm still learning me letters at the moment. I only know I to eat, so if it ain't too much pleading trouble... Ah, 
Actually, Gina, it's the back of the car that's important. Eh? Oh, come on! It's just a dirty old smudge on the back, that's all! It turns out that this is very high-quality French machine oil. It's a very particular scent, apparently. You don't say! Let's have a whiff, then. Woo! You sure? I don't smell nothing! No, no, we didn't mean that you should smell it. Oh, right. You mean Toby? Oh, yes, of course. <gasps> Doggy! Woof. It says the smell so good it can truck people over the oceans, can he? Of course. Professor Hairbrain informs us that this oil is unique to Mr. Drepper's workshop. <laughs> I like how she holds him out like that, but she also looks like she's trying to keep the butt away from her face. I think he's picked up a scent. So you mean if he follows the scent of this oil, Toby could lead us to that dodgy coast of workshop? That's right. That's exactly what we were hoping. All right, then. We'll give it a go. I'll just follow that. But wait, where did you... What's a pickpocket? If I can lead everyone to that Trevor's workshop, I'll be the boss's boss before next week. <laughs> oh, yes, Gina. I'm sure he'll be promoted. Poor, poor Gregson. <laughs> Gregson's is, is somewhere eating his fish and chips. He fucking sneezes. <laughs> oh, that's weird. No, sneezing when I'll eat my fish and chips before. Must be a bad batch. Right then, Otto. Leave it to me. Sorry? We're gonna get going after that Dodge Engineer Cove right this minute. Oh, but hang on. Someone's supposed to be on guard duty here all the time. I'm afraid we can't help. We need to get on with our investigation as well, Gina. Oh, right. Oh, well. Never mind. It ain't gonna be me what gets it in the neck. It'll be the boss. <laughs> poor, poor Gregson again. I'm sure you don't regret hiring me at all. Ready, Toby? Get that old scent, have you? Come on, then, boy. See you later. And away they go. I do hope the scent of that oil leads them to that swindler's workshop. Yes, I hope so, too. Ideally, before the dog swims across the channel to France. Well, I think we've done all the best game we can here for now. I'm sure Holmes is going to now magically appear at Madame Dispel's museum. If we could just determine the whereabouts of Mr. Drebber. I'm sure Gina and little Toby won't let us down. Now then, do you think we ought to try to speak with Mr. Holmes at this point? We have things to discuss, and I'm dying to meet him again after all these months. Yes, it's quite possible he might know something useful. You're right. We ought to find him in Madame Dispel's. He's supposed to be working there as a temporary waxwork exhibit. I guess he was on break. Yes, yeah, Cyrus told me all about his latest unusual venture. I can't wait to see him posing. It's a pretty dumb pose, honestly. I don't believe he visited this place for quite some time. Okay, that's good. I'm glad that they did give, like, they, they give an, an indicator in the, the dialogue there, right? He's like, are you sure we've done everything that we need to do here? So, good on you, game. That's still something the old race attorneys did not fucking have. Uh, October 23rd, Mount Two Spells, Museum Wax Works. Here we are again at the House of Horrors. I'm afraid I haven't gotten used to the place yet. I'd still like to turn on my heels and go straight home. Via the confectionery, of course. <laughs> That's cute. That's, again, look at that little detail they did there, right? She remembered that we came here already and he wasn't here. Uh, otherwise, she would have probably said this for the first time, right? Cute. It's like, it's a little detail. That's very, I love that, you know? Susan Hassan really is after something sweet today, isn't she? <laughs> And then he, and then Naruto like even mentions like, damn, she's really craving some sweets. Ah! What's the matter? Look, Mr. Naruto, look at that wax work. I'm quite sure it wasn't there before. There he is. It's exactly like Mr. Holmes, down to the very last detail. Aha! What is it? Oh, sorry. I think you'll find that's the temporary wax work himself. Ah, uh, the friend of my d dedicated employee. Oh, yes. Hello again, sexy witch lady. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh, sorry. It's Rinosuke. Rinosuke Naruhodo. I must say, I'm quite spellbound by the great detective. He is a marvel. My precious waxwork is already back where it belongs. You, you don't mean... Oh. But yes, the mystery is solved already. Damn. Holmes working fast. Wow. Mr. Holmes really can't, can really engage his brain when he's hungry enough. <laughs> so as you can see, he has returned to his habitual duties. 
Yes. Mr. Holmes, hi. Hello. It's me, Naruto. Mr. Holmes, look. This is habitual duties. Hello, us. Do not disturb her. Shh. Shh, penguins. Shh. Poor Susan san She looks very perplexed. <laughs> it's okay. It all makes sense here in a second. Let's go over there and feel his bicep, Mrs. Toe. That's very lewd and rude of you, Mr. Naruto. It's fine. He'll totally dig it, right? Right, Mr. All right, Mr. Holmes? Can I actually look at this thing, or am I looking at him? We really do need to speak, Mr. Holmes, and I'm longing to say hello again. But where is he? Now nah, I'm looking at him. Ooh, ha, hey, ha. Hello there. Ooh, ha. Look what I can do. I've learned some new moves since you last saw me, Miss Susto. I think you might find that he's quite nearby, actually. Oh? What? What are you... <laughs> Indeed, my dear fellows, it is I. What? The world famous great detective in waxwork, Sherlock Holmes. <laughs> I'm alive! Oh, oh no! Susan Hassan! Susan Hassan! Susan died that day. <laughs> Oops, I might have. I might have goofed there. My most humble apologies. I thought I died and gone to eternal paradise for a moment. Via London. My dear madam, allow me to make amends by offering you a tasty free deduction at some point. <laughs> as long as it's not of questionable street food quality. I don't understand. Why are you working as a waxwork here, Mr. Holmes? Merely a secret identity, you understand. Though the case is largely solved now. Largely solved? We're talking about the waxwork abduction, I presume. Indeed we are, my good fellow. As I predicted, it was as easy as proverbial pie. Though I confess, I'm here to partake of a pie, proverbial or otherwise. Or any food so far today, for that matter. I'm quite ravenous, I am, actually. You are, you yourself are looking like a delicious drumstick, Mr. Naruhodo. Okay, well, we better get you some lunch for- Oh, I got a snog in my arm! Oh, that's a big tummy rumbly. That stomach rumble echoed around the whole museum. So how did you manage to solve it so quickly? Oh, well, do, do remember I said it was largely solved. Anyway, I simply negotiated with the culprit. Are you familiar with the so-called telephone? What the heck is that thing? Largely solved, huh? I wonder if the part that's not been solved yet is gonna be tied to this case. I feel like it has to be, right? Oh yes, it's the most modern invention, allowing you to hold a conversation with people far away. Is it the fucking rotary ones? Is it the ro yeah, it probably is. I think the the earliest ones have the rotary too, or is that did that actually come later? I actually the earliest ones had like it was like on a string that was attached to like a box that was on the wall, and it had like a microphone that was put in there. Was it actually numbers though to it? Actually, maybe there wasn't. It was just it was just like from one location to a specific another location. Yeah, that's actually probably what it is. Japan only the imperial capital and a handful of other cities are connected as yet. This morning, a telephone call was received here from the perpetrator of the abduction. As such, I was able to negotiate terms, and in the end, the waxwork was returned. That's amazing. Just between you and I. It would appear the culprit had always intended to return the stolen waxwork in any event. Oh, but I thought whoever was responsible had demanded a ransom, no? Yes, I think perhaps. The ransom demand was necessary to avoid unwanted suspicion regarding the true motive. But does that not mean your negotiating was entirely unnecessary? <laughs> A fact that I must ask you to keep from Madame Dispels at all costs. <laughs> oh, that's funny. In fact, I probably shouldn't have told you at all. Forget what I said. Oh, great young Iris awaits my return to Baker Street after all. Poor Iris. <laughs> Poor malnourished child. Now then, do I sense that you have some business with this great waxwork? Oh, you might say so. But first, I, I think we've done this before, but let's do it again. As you see, I'm rather busy, blah, 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 blah. Okay. All right, all right, all right. No funny fluff dialogue or anything. Enoch Dreba. We're in the process of trying to track somebody down. Oh. Yes, a man by the name of Enoch Dreba. I'm checking my handy dandy little book. Smack. Here's a swindler. He's a swindler who duped Professor Harebrain and the engineer who built the kinesis machine. A swindler and an engineer. Quite the 
the modern man. He also seems to be a conjurer of sorts too, with considerable knowledge of stage magic. We really need to locate him before the trial resumes tomorrow morning. But we have so few clues to go on as the trouble. Do you have any good ideas? I have no data yet. It is a capital mistake to have good ideas before one has data. If I do something of the man's appearance at least, I may be in a better position to help. Yes, Trevor's appearance. Unfortunately for you, however, presently I have a little, little to occupy myself and little to fill my stomach. As soon as you find any clue, no matter how small, I should gladly give you my thoughts on it. Okay. Let's just go, let's just go and do that before we even get into the Cosmo shit. Mr. Holmes, would you cast your eyes over this photographic print? It's a mystery, Dr. Trevor. The face of the engineer we seek. Well, all Englishmen look broadly the same, of course. So looking at the photograph won't be particularly instructive. Are you all right, Mr. Holmes? Ah, yes, forgive me. Very interesting, this. Very interesting indeed. What's wrong, Mr. Holmes? You've turned quite pale all of a sudden. Is this gonna turn out to be the person that borrowed the waxwork figure? What? Huh? Nothing else? You bitch! Let me present this. Odie Asman. Yes, a fearsome adversary. What? You, you mean you fought him? I once infiltrated his criminal organization in order to investigate the man and his activities. But he saw through my disguise instantly. I still remember what the man said to me now. What was it? Whoever saw such a tall old lady? <laughs> old lady? Indeed, but my special disguise hasn't seen the light of day again since that humiliation. Mrs. Minicle is retired. Mrs. Minicle? I would give my right arm to see that, just like that waxwork figure over there did. <laughs> I don't know if that helped me at all, but it was funny. Um, what about the birdcage? Oh, wait, what? Huh? I presented the birdcage, right? I did. It, it presented that for some reason. All right, I'm not getting anything else. Fine. Cause what? Mr. Holmes, did you lie to us? My dear Mr. Narhodo, stay that piercing stare. What is this about? Last winter, when we were first on our way to Britain, aboard the steamship. Your words were very clear. So then, let us unravel this mystery and discover what events led to this curious murder. You told us that it was murder. And you examined Kazuma-sama's body. Indeed. And where lies the problem? We met him earlier today. The victim, Kazuma Sogi. Quite sure. He was wearing some sort of mask and was apparently suffering from amnesia. But yes, I'm quite sure it was Kazuma-sama. You must have known at the time, Mr. Holmes, that he wasn't actually dead. Well, I can only assume I was swept up in the murderous atmosphere at the moment. But the fellow wasn't dead at all. <laughs> Priceless. I don't suppose that performance would pass muster, would it, Mr. Narihodo? I can believe that the crewmen present at the time made a mistake. But not you, Mr. Holmes. I will now tell you something of the first importance, my dear fellow. Great detectives are warned to lie. It will serve you well to remember that. Please, Mr. Holmes. Tomorrow in court, you will find yourself on the threshold of a very great mystery. For now, I'm afraid that is all I can say. I have a suggestion, Mr. Narahodo. Will you indulge me? Oh, well, what is it? As I explained to you when you arrived, the missing waxwork has been returned. And I personally reinstalled it in the exhibit from which it was taken, behind those thick curtains. Oh, yes, the professor exhibit, isn't it? Would you like to see it? For a mere five shillings? That's a special one-time-only price, you understand. What? Damn... 
Holes being all mysterious as shit. God damn it, dude. You gotta solve this shit yourself, Naruto. God dang it. For I am Hobo Holmes. Just like Hobo Wright. The opportunity won't come again, I might add. Would you like to see the fruits of my labor? Oh, well, we do have a rather pressing investigation to carry out. Perhaps we could postpone? The price is a very reasonable five shillings. I think you'll find it's well worth it. Are you... Are you being quite serious, Mr. Holmes? Surely you need only look at my expression to ascertain if this is seriousness or silliness. I can never tell with you. That's the point. Very well. It couldn't hurt. Here's your five shillings. Gratefully received. So, the special exhibit waits behind the curtain. I invite you to peruse it at your leisure. Hmm. Well, the money's been spent, so... Let's go and see the special exhibit. The fuck is it gonna look like? Oh. Uh-oh. Is it gonna look like the guy? Of the, the literal picture? No, it's not that the ransomer was the image. The waxwork is going to look like the the engineer, isn't it? He's going to look like Enoch Drebber. Oh, that's going to be... Oh, hmm, through this curtains at last. Oh, boy. Five shillings we've had to pay. This is even right somehow that Mr. Holmes slipped the money into his own pocket, does it? No. Ah, we could ask Gina to retrieve for us using her special skills. Pickpocketing police officers and diddling detectives. Is this what makes Britain great? <laughs> Not to mention demigod prosecutors taking the law into their own hands or chip-loving inspectors. Inspector Gregson comes off rather well in that list, I think. All things considered. October 23rd, Madame to Spell, special exhibit. The head's missing? <laughs> oh dear. I felt a shiver run down my spine as soon as we walked in here. Miss Susito! I say we turn our heels and go straight home via really big confectionery. We we certainly can't do that. We paid five shillings already. That's it. I was gonna use that on the confectionery! True. Actually, now I'm looking a little more closely. We're be your head, mate. You pay good money to see an exhibit that's clearly incomplete. The nerve of the great diddling detective is far more terrifying than anything else in this place. This must be what Mr. Holmes meant when he said this case was largely solved. Oh. Be that as it may, Mr. Holmes heavily implied there'd be a clue around the engineer in here, didn't he? But where? Since we pay five shillings, let's do our do five shillings worth of investigation, shall we? Yes, we, we will get what we paid for. It's that fear of frustration that's making Susto son's voice tremble. Let's have a look-see doodle. Who the fuck are you? It's part of the exhibit. It's just as disturbing as the rest. It looks surreal. Seems to be a young man in a white overcoat. And he has a large shovel in his hand, too. Look. Perhaps we should investigate it in a little more detail. Must. Look at the face. Show me your face. I can't. What? Oh my God. Oh, it's you. It is literally you. I see your fucking monocle. Am I really looking at this guy and not looking at his face? The person that discovered the body is Enoch Drebber? <laughs> I'm, like, I'm looking at everywhere else that's not his face. Because he's got, he's got the eye patch of some kind. Ah! <laughs> Damn. What's this here? Well, this would appear to be a lens in the, in the middle, so I believe it's probably a camera. The camera? But it's so small. British technology is incredible, isn't it? I mean, what about Mr. Holmes' skin skin prints? I think perhaps you should treat Mr. Holmes' invention as exceptions to the rule. But anyway, why would the man be in a graveyard at night with a camera? I, I wonder... Perhaps he's trying to capture the moment a dead body came back as a ghost on film. We'll just borrow this for a little while, I think. The camera from the neck of a waxwork in the Madame Spells special exhibit. By looking at the photographic plate inside the camera, we can see what picture was taken. What's a photographic plate? 
It's a piece of glass coated in a special emulsion that reacts to the light coming through in through the lens. If we open the cover at the back of the camera, we should find it. Let's have a look. You should see yourself, Suzu-san. Your eyes are shining. You really do like machinery, don't you? Look at dick! Look at dick! Well, I can't wait. Can I see your face? I can't see his face very well. Can you? Perhaps if I just... Oh, do you think you could... You should be manhandling the exhibits, Mr. Arahoto. I'll put it back exactly as it was. Don't worry. Yes. Show me. Ah! What on earth? How can... I, I don't believe it. A black monocle. Mr. Hodo, is, is it possible that this man is... Yes. Yes. I fucking knew it. It's Enoch Drebber. The color of his hair is different, but it's unmistakably him. Uh, indeed it is. Mr. Holmes! This man is the subject of your present hunt, I believe. Yes, that's... that's right. Just who is this man? Why is he here in this exhibit? Why does the convict behind him have no head? The head was missing when the model was returned by the thief who stole it. What a surprise. So then the case isn't yet solved, is it? Did I not say so myself? Largely solved were my words, I believe. But I must locate the missing head to the suite, as Madame would say, or I'll be in grave trouble. A very hungry eye still awaits my return to Baker Street, preferably with rations. Ah! Do you know, though? Something about this room is strange. Strange? What do you mean? Well, the displays in the House of Horrors are supposed to depict real events, are they not? Indeed they are, Mrs. Doe. Do go on. And as terrifying as they are, the scenes in the, in the other exhibits are believable. But this one... <laughs> Rise from the grave! This surely could never really have happened, could it? I think it's time I educate you a little about the nature of the instance involving the professor 10 years ago. Zombie! Zombie professor! The resurrecting convict. I believe I told you a little about the professor yesterday, did I not? He took the lives of five victims, everyone being either a member of the aristocracy or royalty. All were attacked by an enormous hunting hound and had their throats ripped from their bodies. Ugh! Oh gosh, an enormous hound? How awful. Bad doggo. After taking the life of his fifth victim, the killer was apprehended. It was a case of unprecedented magnitude in Britain, you understand, accordingly. The professor was tried in a closed court. No members of the public were permitted. A closed court? See me in the professor's identity? Ah, as you surmise, my dear fellow, his identity was never made public. So what does that mean that the head was actually supposed to look like? Was it just like a bag or a blank face? Can't imagine Mad 2 Spell's fucking new. Naturally, he was found guilty and was summarily sentenced to death by hanging. He was buried in a grave at the Lowgate Cemetery, which adjoins the rear of the prison where he had been held. However, that was not the end of the affair. Oh? The very night that he was buried, the convicted, ma the convicted man came back to life. Oh, no, here's the, 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 the return of the great departed soul. Came back to life. He clawed his way out of the ground and emerged into the moonlit graveyard. The exhibit here depicts that very scene, as described by the sole witness to those chilling events. Oh, there was a witness. But of course, my dear fellow, it was none other than the young man in the white overcoat. He not Trevor. He saw it happen. Hmm. What the fuck, dude? So this is a waxwork model of Enoch Drebber. Ten years ago, the convicted professor, having been uh, gibbeted and buried, 
emerged from his grave in the dead of night. The sole witness to that unimaginable scene was this young man. From appearances, I would say he was about 20 years old. So horrifying. Scared out of his wits, the young Drebber ran to a nearby police station to report the incident. And the sheer terror of what he's seen is said to have turned his hair white overnight. <laughs> really? Yes, it's shown the photograph we have, we have of him. His hair is completely white. For the following few days, the story of what he'd seen was on every front page in the capital. The public was frantic for every last detail about the killer who'd come back to life. As you've seen, an exhibit was even created here at Madden to Spells. I can quite understand why the man's hair turned white, certainly. But what I don't understand is what Mr. Dripper was doing in the first place, in a lonely graveyard in the middle of the night. Yes, what was he up to? Tell me! The professor's acts of terror threw London's upper classes into complete panic ten years ago. It was a great scandal, one might say, at the very highest levels of society. And since the killer's identity was never made public, rumors abounded. After all, no killer had ever before systematically employed a dog as a weapon of murder. Yes, I can imagine the impact the case must have had. But in time, of course, the rumors abated. So too did talk of the shocking witness account of the convict who came back to life. It was forgotten, dismissed as a dubious ghost story, as a preposterous parlor tale. But, but why did people stop believing it? Why, simply because there was no resurrection to speak of, as was established in fact. What, what do you mean by no resurrection? The police investigated the grave in Low Gate Cemetery and published the findings. The convict's body was found to be buried exactly where it had been following the execution. No! But that would mean Mr. Drepper must have lied to the police and in the newspapers. Oh. Oh, I see. Again, playing into his, his own ability to use smoke and mirrors, right? To make you believe the unbelievable. That would appear to be the only logical explanation, yes. The young man subsequently vanished from society and nothing has been heard of him since. It's rather striking, then, that he should resurface now, don't you think? Of course, the convicted murderer couldn't have really come back to life. That's not possible. But Drubber's hair is unusually white. That really did happen overnight as a result of shock. It's hard to believe the incident was an out-and-out -out lie. Hmm. So, look at you. This must be the killer. The fiend knows the professor. Yes, I think so. According to what Madame Tuspel said, he killed five victims, all of noble or royal blood. The waxwork is so lifelike, isn't it? Like all the models in this place. I know. Looks like it could start moving at any moment, doesn't it? If only had a head, that is. Perhaps we should examine it in a little more detail. His little nubbin. So this is the condemned man? Yes, the so-called professor. Then, then perhaps his head was chopped off by a guillotine. B but unable to find peace, he, he emerged from his grave as a headless ghost. Do we have to entertain such terrifying ideas, Miss Susato? Anyway, I'm sure the model had a head once. It's a metal fitting for it, see? Then perhaps Mr. Holmes absentmindedly forgot to reattach it? That's an extremely absent-minded detective you're describing, isn't it? Or perhaps the thief absentmindedly forgot to include the head when he or she re returned to the museum. And that would be an extremely absent-minded thief. But there may have been some reason why only the head wasn't returned. Well, whatever the reason, it means we don't know what the face of the infamous professor looked like, do we? Oh. I guess, I mean, it must have been made public at some point if it's actually got his face on there, but... He had a close trial, so nobody knew what he looked like until this? Something caught just inside the comic's jacket here. It looks like a piece of broken glass. Quite a big piece, too. It's very thick, isn't it? About five times thicker than normal window glazing, I'd say. So, the window to the Grey Crystal Tower? Where could such a thick piece of glass have come from, I wonder? I suppose it must have been made thick to increase its strength. Why? Well, perhaps the glass had to span in a particularly wide area. 
such as a big in a big building, for example. Ah, well, we've seen large glass building recently, haven't we? Some of the glass was broken too. You don't mean? Exactly. The crystal Tower with the Great Exhibition. Why would glass from the Crystal Tower be lodged inside this waxworks jacket? Makes you think, doesn't it? A small fragment of very unusual and thick glass was found in the folds of the clothing of the Professor, wa Professor Waxwork. It would appear to be from the Crystal Tower. Yeah, it's just gonna play into like the the whole uh, illusion of this, right? Earlier in court, we established that the Kinesis experiment was a trick. And now we discover this fragment of glass here in this waxwork. It's just a coincidence. Uh, anything else here? Don't think so. Oh, no, I think we're done. <laughs> ah! <laughs> what the blighted door, Odo? What are you going to done? Gina, what are you doing here? Screaming in my ear hole. I asked Iris and she said this is where you be, so time to die. Oh, gosh, you got the gun back. So, Gina, not let... Oh, God. I skipped over that by accident. Uh, not so loud in the museum. Madam Dispels will have you take a position as a waxwork if you're not careful. Oh, God. But someone finally fired out of that gun, right? They finally fired a smoke bomb. Uh, she did that shit all the time in the last game. <laughs> what she needed to bail. I think there might be a more pressing concern. I, I still have some flash power left from six months ago. So uh, oh, okay. That's funny. So... All right, Gina, we understand, but please put the gun down the gun! Put the gun down, Gina! You all got a demon, darn it! Sorry, I, I got scared. Just try being the one on the other end of the barrel. So, what brings you here, Gina? What brings me here? What do you think? We found it. Found that Dodgy Cove's workshop. What? You found Drummer's workshop? Yep, Toby's nose took me straight there. The boss and the are heading over there now in a drag, so come on! Here's the address. I got the boss to ride out. Oh, thank you, Gina. We'll make our way there once. All right, then. See you there! Way to go, Gina. Uh, you go. Don't mind me. I'll just stay here. Be still. What? I know my place. In the exhibit over there. <laughs> oh dear, someone is feeling sorry for himself. Let's go, Mr. Holmes. You're coming! Your words harden me, I must say. But if I were to shirk my duties here, Madam would have me pay monetary recompense and Iris's dinner plate would be empty once more. Forget that! I'll pay for everything! <gasps> This is not a moment to lose, my dear fellow. I shall hand a carriage at once. Now offer to share the customs to Holmes, then. Great. I shall gladly pay half, Mr. Harahoto. Thank you, Miss Susto. Right, let's go. See, now that's a buddy right there. Miss Susto's a little buddy.